Okay, so now we have our Docker Swarm cluster. We deployed a minimal example to make sure that everything is working as we expected it. Now we are going to take our actual Flask application and deploy that. So we are in this build Flask app Docker Swarm, um, and then we are working in this Docker Compose Swarm.yaml um, configuration file right now. I did forget to mention, if you're working on these files from your local machine, you will have to SSH or rsync them, and SCP or rsync them over to your manager node if they're not there already. If you're already working from your manager node, that's fine too. I tend to just have a script that says um, deploy to swarm node, which is like cd dot dot, and then I'll just rsync the files over. If I have an SSH key, that's where that goes. And then this is the name of um, my project directory. And then I just say, okay, just rsync it on over. So that is how I got things over to my manager node. So again, here we are, we're on um, version three of the Docker Compose syntax. And then once again, we have two services. We have the Flask app server and the proxy server. So the Flask app is actually the application that we want to run and the proxy is the load balancer that sits in front of it. And this is what allows us to have multiple instances of our server running on, you know, presumably multiple nodes or multiple instances per node. There's all kinds of crazy stuff we can do. So once we have that, okay, we have to have this image here. So just as another point, because this is something that like really tripped me up when I was moving from Compose um, to Swarm. I was like, but my build context is there. Why can't I just do everything as I was before? No, you can't, all right? You just, you can't do it. You have to have an image. Um, I have a video earlier on in the course that shows you how to take an image and upload it to Quay or Docker Hub. So once you have your image, and there's quite a lot of like just simple publicly available ones. Like there's, um, I don't know, like a Docker hello world. There's, you know, there's all kinds of like just little applications if you're just looking for something small to play with. Okay, so then I have the image, I have the ports, um, I have the environment, the service ports. This is, this is very important for the HA proxy, for the Docker Cloud HA proxy um, load balancer that we're using. You have to have the service ports or else it's not gonna work. And it has to be the ports that are being served uh, in your application. So in this particular one, it's port 5000. So then once we get there, then we have, so see these are all of our deploy keys. Within there we have replicas, which is the number of instances that we want running at any given time. I have this set as one because this is just, this is just a toy cluster, but you know, this could be quite a bit more. Um, and then our update config restart policy placement. I want to place this on one of the nodes that's a worker node. And then I want this in my web network, which is an overlay network, which is necessary for using Docker Swarm. So if you'll remember earlier, when we were using Docker Compose, we didn't even have to create a network. It would be created for us just kind of in the background automatically, but now we do, and it has to be an overlay network. So you can see here's the networks web and the driver is overlay. Once we have that, we have our proxy service, and this is the Docker Cloud HA proxy. It depends upon the Flask app server, our mode is TCP, the balancing conditions are least con. So I think the default load balancer is called round robin, which means um, let's, like, let's say that we have four worker nodes, worker nodes one through four. It would say, it would get a request, it would farm off the first one to worker one, then worker two, then worker three, and so on and so forth. But we may not want that because maybe we get a request uh, for worker one that completes really quickly. And then, you know, and then once that's gone, we don't need to necessarily go to worker two, we could just go back to worker one. So what I say here is balance least connections. So wherever there are the least, whichever node has the least amount of connections, farm it out over there. We once again have our volumes with the Docker sock. Uh, we have our ports because the port for the HA proxy is port 80 the networks and the deployment constraints, our load balancer always goes on our manager. So once we have that, we want to do once we have that, we are going to deploy our stack. And this is the Docker compose swarm file. So I am actually I am 
Um, I am on my manager node. This is an SSH connection that I have opened there, and that is what is sitting in this terminal. Okay, so then we see Docker stack deploy, and I have um, I have my configuration file. I'm once again calling it prod, and it says creating service prod underscore flask app server, and then creating service prod underscore proxy. We can run docker service ls. And okay, we can see that here they are. They're both, um, they both seem to be up. We seem to be pretty good on that. So let's head on over to our web browser and try it out. Okay, and you can see that this is giving this status okay, which is exactly what we expect because that is what the Flask app server does. Like it just gives, it just gives the status okay. It's just a really, really simple example. So, oh, what did I do? This is what happens when you have too many windows open. Okay, so now we have this. Once we have that, maybe let's look a bit more into this, inspect. Okay, so you can see when I just run um, Docker service inspect prod, you know, and then the name of the service, what it does is it gives you JSON output, which is really great for like anything programmatic that you're trying to do. And I mean, JSON's fairly readable. What I normally do though, is I also add in the dash dash pretty flag. I just find it a bit more readable that way. Whichever one you prefer is fine. If you prefer to read in JSON, you know, that's fine too. I always kind of think of it as like being one of those guys in the matrix, you know, when um, during one of the opening scenes when he's like, oh wow, how can you read that? And then I guess if you just stare at a screen reading binary long enough, eventually you can learn to read binary. Eventually you can learn to read JSON too. So, so I ran Docker service inspect and the service name dash dash pretty. And then we get, you know, we get all the same things that we got before. We get the ID, we get the name, we get the labels. It's replicated. It's on a worker node. We have the service ports, we have the network. Um, so I mean, everything everything looks pretty good. That's exactly what we wanted there. And once we have that, we're gonna do Docker service logs. Okay, and then you can see uh, this command looks very, very similar to what we ran before when we are using Docker Compose. So you'll notice like all the commands, all the syntax, everything is very, very similar. It's just slightly different. Uh, the subcommands will be slightly different depending on kind of which part of the Docker ecosystem you're in. So we can have Docker service logs, dash dash tail 20, and then the name of our server. And what you can see here is this is all of the, um, this is all the like debug information from the Flask application. So it's all right here, just as it would normally be. And then you can see everything that is happening in there. So let's, I'll just run that again quick. Okay, and then you can see, yeah, it still comes up. We can do this for the proxy. Okay, so I find that the proxy has kind of like cryptic output. I can't ever seem to figure, like I can't seem to figure it out Sometimes I'll have a port that's not open that should be open. Um, like this is that was actually a problem that I had recently. So I had a, I didn't have a port open that I should have had open, and so the communication between my manager nodes and my worker nodes wasn't working correctly. And it, like it looks like the output is basically the same no matter what, which was very worrying. And then you can also see info ha proxy end, which is also a little bit worrisome because it's like oh does this mean that like it exited somehow, that it finished? Apparently not, I guess this is all okay. And then you can even see um, this one where it says, you know, it will look for the default services and this is the server. Um, everything gets, like everything gets assigned a unique IP address by Docker, you don't even really have to worry about that. So you can see it's prod flask app server dot one for the replica and then this is a random string ID. And then this is somehow the IP address and you can see, I'm not totally sure what this is. I think this is how often it gets checked, like how often the health check happens. And that's it. So, oh, so that is actually one kind of important thing to notice. 
So what it does is it does a health check and the health check is just the, the root of your service. So if the root of your service is not the actual root, if it's like slash API or something like that, then make sure that you um, update the health service in the config. Otherwise it's gonna like try to run the health service and then it's gonna come back as something funky or like, you know, not found or unavailable or something like that. And then the HA proxy is gonna think like, oh, well, this service isn't working when in fact it might be working. It's just that you're serving it from a different route. So that's just something to keep in mind. Right now we don't, uh, for this particular application, that doesn't matter because it's just this one. And this is our root. So what I mean here is if like you didn't have anything here, if this is a 404, or if this would serve up a 404 or something, make sure that you put that as whatever it is, if it's slash API or hello or, you know, I don't know, whatever it is. But this one is fine because this one gives a status okay, which also behind the scenes gives a um, like a 200 status okay, which is exactly what the load balancer is looking for. Oh, I think that's everything that I wanted to show you for this lesson. Yeah, just one more time. I'll just go over the logs just because the logs are like so, so, so handy. So I have Docker service logs, dash, dash, tail. You don't have to do dash, dash, tail. You could get all the logs if you wanted. And then there you go, you have them all. So now that we have done this, we have our Flask application. We have done sort of like a minimal deployment scenario, one manager, one worker, one replica, we make sure that everything is okay. We make sure that we have a status that's up and running. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna start to move on to slightly more complicated deployment scenarios where we have multiple services, not just one. And we wanna run these, we want them maybe to have multiple replicates and we want for them to be served from different URLs. So for instance, what that is, is say I have um, my Flask app server and that is one set of APIs and then I have another service and I want for that to be served at like slash API and so on and so forth. So we're gonna go into that next. We're gonna go into how you can like really start to scale, how you can really have a microservices architecture where you can put lots of things together and you can deploy them and it's really cool and really awesome. So I will see you in the next lesson and we will deploy all the things.